How to use Asana 2023 Full Asana Project Management Tutorial Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. I hope you all are doing great and are having an amazing day. I bring you back with yet another great and very detailed tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be learning how you can use Asana. Now Asana is one of the greatest project management softwares out there so it's going to be very informative and it's going to be very helpful so please do make sure to watch this video till the end to gain all the information you can on Asana. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So first of all, to get straight into it, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to write Asana. So here we are. Manage your team's work, projects, and tasks online, Asana. Asana helps you manage projects, focus on what's important, and organize work in one place for seamless collaboration. So we're going to get right into their main website. We're going to wait for it to load up real quick. And here we are. So here we can see Asana says, are silos making teamwork more painful? Asana helps you manage projects, focus on what's important and organize work in one place for seamless collaborations. And if you go down here, we can see that all the different Asana project management features, like you can stay organized and connected by bringing your team's work together in one shared space, choose the project view that suits your style and collaborate no matter where you are. We can see in the planning section, you have uh, all these different things, like you can plan different things. Uh, you can ask your uh, project members or clients to like the plans if you want to. Then you also have content development over here. But obviously, this is the list view that you get. You can also get the timeline view when it comes to Asana. Like this is your main timeline view. This is your boards view. In your boards, you can get uh, Kanban, which is one of the most famous or even like uh, any other game view or something like that. And we're going to discuss it all in great detail. So just keep watching this video. Then you have more things like process management. And uh, in process management, you can basically automate your routine work by leaving the repetitive stuff to Asana so we can do more of the work that we do best. You can also see all this different interfaces and stuff like that, which you can use to automate stuff. Uh, you can automate different programs and more things. You can also make uh, custom rules and seconds to automate common tasks and reduce errors like assigning work, setting due dates, and much, much more. There are also forms that make it easy for others to submit work requests. You can also get your team's details that they need to obviously start things off easily. Then you also have more than 100 project templates Fine tune them to do work your way, make sure no one misses a step and keep your team rowing in the same direction. Like, you know, other project management softwares don't really have templates like you have to start from scratch. Uh, and let's say you're not very experienced with project management software. So what will you do? You can easily choose a template that Asana provides you with. And like that is one of the coolest things that a project management software can provide you with. Now let's move forward to approvals. Basically, you can remove bottlenecks that drag out your work, mark tasks for approval so everyone knows what needs to get done to get to the next step. So yeah, basically you can do that too just to you know uh, keep your work flowing and keep it easy. Then you have tons and tons of different integrations, one platform to manage work. With more than 200 plus integrations, you can bring together everything your team needs to communicate, collaborate, and coordinate work from start to finish. We can see that we have tons of different integration tools like Microsoft Teams, Google Sheets, we have Zoom, Adobe Creative Cloud, and much, much more. And obviously, with uh, each of them, you have different features like you can use your Microsoft Teams for communications, add and collaborate on Asana tasks and like everything like respectively, whatever they do, you can do it on Asana. You can also do different workflow managements by customizing your very own workflow. And how do you do that? Uh, this is your product development workflow. Like you can take example from this, like, you know, you have all these different product developments. Then you have your IT requests workflows. Obviously, every workflow has their own custom rules, their own different tasks assigned and different tasks added to your main projects. And as you can see here, this person has integrated uh, Slack and Gmail with their main task or their main projects just to, you know, make it easier for themselves to communicate. 
Then obviously you have different reporting where basically if you want to get the whole picture and work around with that, you can do that as well. And there's just much, much more that you can mess around with. So now that we know the main things that come with Asana, let's go ahead and discuss about the you know overview. As we just discussed, you can build project plans, coordinate tasks, and hit your deadlines. You have the project management, the campaign management, creative production, and more of those features. You also have agile management. Like You don't get a lot of agile management softwares out there today. So Asana is one of the greatest agile management softwares as well. Then if you go in features, you can see in the features we have workflow building where you can create an automated process to coordinate your teams as we just discussed. Then you also have app integrations and one of the best apps to make it easier for you to, you know, coordinate your workflow, then different automations like streamlined processes, reducing errors and spending less time on routine tasks. Then you also have different timelines like build a beautiful Gantt chart in minutes. You can do different reportings. You can uh, mess around with a workload or workflow, see how much work team members have across projects. You have different boards, see and track your work on different Kanban boards. Then you have different goals. Basically, you can set strategic goals and track progress in one place. Uh, you also have different calendar views and different form views and stuff like that. So you have all these things when it comes to the Asana features and you can mess around with it as much as you like. Then you also have, let's go ahead and discuss the pricings that come with Asana. Okay, we also have the pricings. So let's go ahead and mess around and discuss those. So let's wait till it loads up. So here we are. Easily organize your work, start free. Access Asana's features, no credit card required. Now there are three main uh, or four main plans when it comes to Asana. There's the basic and the free plan which is an unlimited free plan. And in this unlimited free plan, basically, uh, again, as I said, it's unlimited, like there's no trial or anything. So all you need to do is just get started with this. Obviously, they're like all the features you get are amazing, but obviously they're going to be a bit less than the premium business and enterprise version. So in the basic version, free forever, $0. Uh, in this free task, you're going to get uh, unlimited tasks, unlimited projects, unlimited messages, activity log, file storage, collaborate with up to 15 teammates. You have list view projects, you have board view projects, you have the calendar view, assignee and due dates, you have your project view, project brief, and much, much more. And when it comes to the premium plan, you have the timeline view, uh, like, yeah, basically you can get the timeline view and workflow builder in your free plan. Then you also have unlimited dashboards. You have reporting across unlimited projects. You also have advanced search, custom fields, unlimited free guests. You have the forms, rules, start dates and times, task templates, milestones, admin console, and private teams and projects. This is what you can get in the premium plan. And the premium plan is a hefty $10.99 almost being $11. Then you have the business plan, which is basically mainly for teams and companies that need to manage work across initiatives. So it's a hefty $25. And as we can see, everything in premium, like this has everything in premium and basic plus you have your portfolios, goals, workload, custom rules builder, forms branching and customization, approvals, proofing, advanced reporting, and much, much more. And then finally, you have the Asana Enterprise Plan, which is for a whole enterprise. And for that, you're going to have to contact the sales team to obviously get the proper plan. And it's for organizations that need centralized visibility, control, and support. So basically, you can get Asana's powerful, intuitive work management platform with advanced admin features and security at a scale. You can also come down here and compare all the features if you want to, but that's totally upon you. And then we can see that, uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it. So now that we've discussed, like I've shown you the main overview of Asana, let's go ahead and get started with it. So once you click on get started, you're going to be taken to the sign in or the login or the sign up place. Now over here, obviously, you're going to need to sign up with an email. Now I'm going to be using a temporary email, but if you're doing this for the long run, I recommend that you use a proper email for yourself. Like you can use a temporary email. There's nothing wrong with that, but 
I just saying, in my opinion, the better thing to be doing is using a proper email for yourself. So I'm going to put in this email and I'm going to add signing up. Now, once we sign up over here, Asana asks you to verify your email. So it says, just go ahead and verify your email. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to verify, verify email address. And uh, once it's verified, what we're going to do is we're going to be redirected into the main Asana app. So we're just going to wait for it to load up and uh, it's going to ask us a basic few questions. Like obviously it's going to ask us to uh, add our name. So make sure to add your proper name. There we go. Then you're going to add in a strong developed password for yourself. And once you do that, you're going to click on continue. Here it says, what's your primary role? This helps us recommend features for you. So you're gonna choose any primary role. You can choose any of like whatever you are. Like you could be a manager, an executive, a director, a team member, a freelancer, business owner, or anything like that. I'm gonna go ahead with executive and I'm gonna click on continue. What kind of work you, do you do? This helps us recommend features for you. So you can choose any one of these or you can just choose all of them if you want to, or you can just skip it ultimately. But I'd say that you choose whatever you do, like you could choose engineering, IT, design, data, uh, you can choose HR, you can choose finance, operations, sale, research, stuff like that. And once you've chosen what you like, what's going to happen is here it says, what's your main objective in Asana? Your choice here won't limit what you can do in Asana. So what do you mainly want to do? We want to do project management. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the first one and we're going to click on continue. And once we've done that here, it says, let's set up your first project. What's something you and your team are currently working on? So obviously you're going to tell them uh, it could be like um, an uh, app development project. Just write that. Once you write that, you're going to click on continue here. It says, what are a few tasks that you have to do for app development projects? So you could, uh, first of all, go with uh, making an equation for the program. Then you can write testing the equation or it could be coding and then testing the equation with the code. And once you do that, you're going to click on continue. And here it says, how would you group these tasks into sections or stages? So let's say, uh, yeah, honestly, this seems like the best one to keep like first to do, then it's doing then done. So I'm just going to go with this and click on continue. And here it says what layout works best for this project of yours. And you can change it later. So do not worry. So uh, you can mess with the layout like uh, choose any layout you want for yourself personally. It could be the list layout. So this is basically your list layout, your main layout. This is the board layout like uh, you find this type of layout on uh, many professional and popular uh, workload management softwares like uh, Trello or maybe ClickUp or something like that. On ClickUp, you're main, more likely to find something like this. On Trello, you're likely to find your Kanban boards and stuff like that. And then there comes your timeline and calendar. In my opinion, the easiest to use is the board one. So you can go with that. But just for basics, I'm going to go with the list. And then obviously you can start adding uh, emails and stuff like that for your workers. And once you're done with that, here it says get Asana for all your schemes. So you can download Asana for iOS and Android. And trust me, it works great. I've used Asana for my uh, Android and it works amazing. So once you've done that, you're going to click on skip for now. And once you click on that, you're going to be redirected to your main Asana homepage. And this is your main dashboard. So here is where you're going to start doing all of your work. So yeah, now that we're here, let's get into the main nitty gritty of how you can work with Asana. So first of all, first things first, let's go ahead and describe and let's discuss this whole interface in front of you. So this region, like this black box you see over here, this is your main, obviously, dashboard for your list view. And as you can see, this is your list view. Here uh, you have your to-do tasks. Here are, this is like your to-do panel, and this is your to-do tasks. 
And then down here, you have your doing panel. And in your doing panel, you can add more tasks for yourself. And obviously, there's the done panel, you can add more tasks over there and stuff like that. And like once you're done with your tasks, you can uh, click on uh, the tick and there you go, you're done with your tasks, basically. So this is very easy to get familiarized with. So to add a task, all you need to do is you're going to click on add task over here, create a tasks like a new concept, something like that, just random. So we're going to add that. And then you're just going to click enter. And there you go. There's a new task. Now that is how you add a new task. How do you add a new section down here? It says add section. All you're going to do is you're going to click on it and um, you can write trash over here. Like let's say you want to trash some tasks. So all you're going to do is you're going to click on that task and you're just going to throw it down here. So click on it, drag it and just throw it in the trash. So that is basically what you can do by adding different sections and messing around with them. So that is also one uh, of uh, the best features that come with your Asana board. Now, if you were to discuss even more features that come with Asana, you can also discuss your like if you click on a task, it opens up a section like this. And in this section, what you can do is you can uh, change the settings of the task. So let's say uh, in this specific task that we have open in front of us, uh, I want to change the assignee. So let's say I'm the assignee for this task and I want to change it from, uh, you know, myself to someone else. So all I'll do is I'm going to remove myself by clicking on this cross over here. I'm going to remove the assignee from myself. And once I remove myself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on this where it says no assignee. I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to add someone from my email list. And that's it. That is how you assign someone a task. That is how simple and easy it is. Then you obviously have your due date setter, like you can set a date for uh, your tasks. So obviously to set that, it's really easy, really simple. Nothing needs to be explained. You're just going to choose a starting date. And once you choose a starting date, you're going to choose an ending date. So there we go. So basically the due date is from today till the 22nd of Feb. So there we go. That is how you're going to set due dates. And what you can do is you can also change its uh, section from here. Like, let's say you want to change it from to do to doing, or maybe you want to change it from doing to done. You can mess around like that. I'm just going to keep this back at to do. And then there comes your priorities. So priorities are basically, obviously, as it says, there are setting priorities. So let's say the priority for this section is pretty high. So you can just click on high and there we go. The priority for this section is really high for this task is really high and it's like compulsory to do this one. And if they don't like, obviously the status is at risk. Uh, so like, let's say if you keep the status at risk and you keep the priority high, meaning that uh, obviously something could go wrong if this is not done immediately or urgently, or you can just say on track, like, okay, nothing's really wrong with it. You can keep it a higher priority, but the status is okay. It's fine. Nothing to be worried about. Then you can also, uh, this is one of the most important things. You're going to need to add a task description because a task description is what your project members or team members, or maybe someone you're working with is going to open and see and read what the task is really about. So if we're in coding, you can write, in this task, I want you to create code for the UI of our program. And please do make sure to make it look very nice. So yeah, there you go. There's your product description. And you can also add different subtasks to this. Uh, so let's say create a code for UI. Add another subtask, create, let's say, create a good color scheme for UI, you know, just start adding more tasks and random stuff like that. And uh, you can also ask questions or post updates later on if you want to. But yeah, that is basically how you're going to optimize and set around with tasks. So there we are. 
We just added a description, added details. We talked about how to change dates, how to change priorities, how to change statuses, and much more. You can also add different fields. So let's say uh, you can add fields like um, let's add let's add a number, just random thing number, and it could be cost. Like just call the field cost. So we're gonna call it cost. Format number. The decimals choose as it would be. And yeah, you're just going to create a field and there's your field called costs. So this coding tasks costs could be maybe 900 or $900 and you can create more costs for the other projects like just, you know, add the cost and it's going to randomly add the cost for you and create a sum of it under here. So yeah, that is basically how you can just keep on adding more fields. So we talked about how to add tasks, how to add sections, how to add fields, and then how you can obviously mess around with the details, the date, the priority and the status of the task. Now, let's go ahead and discuss how you can switch views uh, when it comes to your, uh, you know, task description and stuff like that. So to change the views, all you're going to need to do is you're going to go up here. Like, first of all, if you go to overview, this is your main overview tab. If you go to list, this is your list section or the list view for when it comes to your project management. If we go to board this, these are your board sections. And remember how I said it's more easier to work on boards. I'll tell you why. Because obviously over here, you have to go like into the details, click on it, go into the great details and stuff like that. You won't need to do that when it comes to boards. You're just going to go on board and let's say you want to change uh, its uh, section from to do to done. All you're going to need to do, like once you're done with the uh, task, hold it, drag it. There we go. Drop it. And that is how simple it is to basically change the section of your task. And then you can also edit it by just clicking on it and then changing your things from here. And that's it. Voila, it's done. And just change the date by clicking on the date, uh, change the priority by clicking on the priority and then just keep on doing much more and then easily just drag it into this section or this section. Like, let's say if this is done, you can drag it here. Let's say if this has an issue, you can drag it in the trash and stuff like that. So that is how easy it is to use your boards. And then obviously you can add more sections in your board. You can even customize your board by going on customize, but we're going to talk about this later. We're not going to talk about this right away. Then if you go in your timeline view in your timeline view, you're going to get tons and tons of different uh, ways to obviously see the timeline of your work. So let's say obviously this coding, it's going to start today and then it's going to end at the 22nd. So that's only what the timeline view is better for. Like you're going to get a brief overview of how long this work should take. So that's what it really does. That's why I told you it's not like very used or like it's it just keeps your work organized, I guess, like, you know, the proper time to submit the task or something like that. But in my opinion, not very useful. So I just wouldn't recommend it like that. And uh, when you have your calendar view in your calendar view, basically you have all these views like um, like it's very similar to your timeline, but calendar is just a more detailed and better described timeline. Then you obviously have your workflow view. And this is obviously for uh, it's starting your workflow when your people are working. And for that, you can create form submissions, you can have task templates, you can also choose from other apps to integrate and automate and stuff like that. But this is obviously something for when it comes to, you know, work ethics and stuff like that to make forms and stuff. Uh, this is your dashboard. Obviously, this is where you can get the main summary of all the tasks you have here, you can see incomplete tasks, the total task, upcoming tasks, sum of cost and everything like that. Then you obviously have your messages uh, to see like if uh, someone you're working with has tried to connecting with you with words and stuff like that. And then there's the files, all attachments to tasks and messages will your project will appear here. I'll show you what they're talking about. Basically, let's say this coding uh, coding task ha needs some attachment to it. Now, how will you attach 
you're going to come here like any email you're just going to click on attachments go to your computer and then attach a file so yeah that's basically how simple and how easy it's going to be to attach something then obviously uh, once you've attached it you're going to go on files and here is where you're going to find your attachments so yeah that's basically how simple it is to mess around with your attachments and all so uh, I think that pretty much covers up the main basic overview of uh, the Asana project management like uh, overlay. Now let's go ahead and discuss all the other details when it comes to using Asana. So this obviously on the left hand side is your main ribbon tab and your main dashboard tab. And in this dashboard tab, what's going to happen is you're going to see all these different, uh, let's say, options to mess around with. And obviously, this is your home option. In your home option, you're going to be at your home place and uh, they're going to tell you to basically set up your profile. And by that, you can customize your home, complete your profile, continue setting up projects and, you know, stuff like that, just to, you know, set yourself up and uh, get right into the Asana tasks. Then if you go on my tasks here, you're going to see a summary of all the tasks when it comes to, you know, your projects. Then if you go in inbox, you're going to see different uh, inbox messages that you've gotten maybe from your clients, maybe from your team members, your workers or something like that. Then comes your reporting, see teamwork from every angle, get insights with charts using real time data across teams, projects, even departments. Asana helps you get set up your first dashboard. So basically, this is a real-time working uh, chart or a graph that basically tells you real-time data across your teams working around with stuff. So this is also a pretty good thing to you know keep an eye out for your workers, you could say. Then here it says, get the picture with portfolios. You can monitor status and team member workload across multiple projects. Asana can help you set up your first portfolio. Then obviously here's your goal section where you can set up different missions and different goals for yourself. Like, you know, I made that project and in that project I can set up a goal like uh, fulfill this project or maybe create the app before this date. So that could be my goal. I could create different team goals and stuff like that. And obviously making goals just makes it much better like give you a good confidence boost i guess like you know just if it works better for you everything depends on how you work then obviously you have your main team section where you're gonna have your project management and obviously if you go over here in john's first team we can see that uh, this is my main project and if you go over here uh, click on this main project uh, board over here. We are going to come to the app development project. So yeah, those are what the tools on the left are for. Now, if we go ahead and discuss more things, like if we go more in depth, we can go ahead and discuss what this create thing does. If you go and create thing, you can basically add tasks from here as well. You can create a totally new project. You can also create a totally new team if you want to. So if you go and create a new team, you can create a new team for your marketing, designing, your project development, an IT team, a software team, anything like that. And once you've created that, all you're going to do is you're going to go in description. And once you go in description, you're going to add a description for your team. And yeah, that's pretty much how you're going to create yourself a brand new team. Then what you can also do is uh, you can again go and create. You can create new projects if you want to. So you can create a project and as I said, Asana has great templates and I'm going to show you how great they are. Obviously, the project that I just created was made from scratch. But if you go on use a template from here, look at that. Asana gives you all these templates like look at this across functional project plan. And this is a project plan with the uh, templates. We can see its dashboard. We can see all the different features it gives. You can also have a work request template just like this and obviously you see how cool it looks how nice it looks and uh, if like it's to your liking if you think this will work for you and your project and your team all you're going to need to do is you're going to click on use template and obviously you can also see the different integrations it brings you like it integrates well with zendesk gyro cloud github clockwise and ServiceNow. if you like what you see you're just going to click on use template 
Once you click on use template, you're gonna choose a project name, you're gonna choose the team you wanna uh, bring it to, you can change the privacy to public or private, and once you've done that, you're gonna click on create project, and what they're gonna do is they're gonna send that template into your main workspace, and here we are. Look at this, we have our board, we have our list, we also have different integrations, we have all these different uh, sections that they've made for us, different uh, fields that they've made for us, and obviously you have different automations, different features, different integrations, and this just gives you a good foundation to start your work off. So those are one of the greatest things that I like about Asana is that it gives you a good foundation for your work. Now, if we were to also discuss more features, we could discuss about the different customizations that Asana brings you with. Now, before getting into those customizations, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna discuss the settings. So for the settings, you're gonna go on the top right profile section, and once you go there, what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on My Settings. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. And now we're here on My Settings. In your My Settings, you can basically change your Asana profile if you want to, along with your name and stuff like that. So you can change that, you can change your pronouns if you want to. You can also give yourself a job title like uh, event manager or something like that. You can uh, give yourself a department or team that you're in. You could give yourself an about that uh, maybe you wanna set up for yourself. You you know want to tell people about yourself that okay, this is me, this is what I do and stuff like that. You can upload a photo if you want to. Then you also have your notification section where uh, you can basically mess around with the notifications, uh, you can pause them if you want to, you can schedule the notifications, basically if you're sleeping for a certain time or if you go off for a certain time, like let's say your work starts at 8 a.m. and from 8 a.m. it goes up till uh, I think 7 p.m. and then after 7 p.m. what you can do is do not notify me from 7 p.m. to till whenever your work starts again. So you could do that or you could just turn it off and you're gonna get notifications all the time. I'd recommend you turn this on because obviously notifications while you're, you know, sleeping or something like that, that could get really annoying. So in my opinion, just keep it off just to, you know, make things easier and better for you. Then you also have your do not disturb. So you have do not disturb me on days off. You can turn on do not disturb on any of these days if you want to. Then you have your different email notifications. Uh, that you can get on your main email for that you can choose these like if you want the activity updates email the mentions only email stuff like that I'd recommend to like you can turn all the others off if you want to but do remember to keep the mentions only on because people will mention you if they like need something really bad from you so they're gonna mention you and make sure to keep that notification on then you also have the browser notifications where you can mess around with your task updates you can uh, be mentions only and stuff like that and you can have your project updates where if like there's some status of your project changes you can uh, see that if someone adds a task you can see that as well and stuff like that then comes your email forwarding. You can create tasks and messages from email addresses associated with Asana. Create tasks by emailing this to asana.com. Tasks emailed will appear in your My Task list. The subject line will be the task name. The body will be the task description. All email attachments will be attached to the task. You can CC teammates to add them as task collaborators and much, much more. So yeah, uh, that's what email forwarding is. Then if you go in account, in your account section, you have your different organizations and workspace where uh, you can basically create a whole organization email and password for yourself. And uh, it's a great thing to do when it comes to your work ethic and integration, like in my opinion. So do make sure to do it because it works wonders, it works great and it just keeps your work really secure. So once you're done with that, then you have your display your display you can keep it dark you can keep it light themed if you want to whatever works best for your eyes then you have your apps where you can integrate different apps for yourself don't worry you can only integrate it from here you can also integrate it from other places uh, so uh, yeah you can just integrate apps and then you can activate them from here and then in the hacks section hacks are experimental features that asana has been tinkering with it's a bit of a beta version and they're not supported features and may change, break, or disappear at any time. 
there's the extra delight hack which adds additional celebrations and delightful surprises to your product experience there is your recurring tasks in the last section of your tasks and then you can also disable notifications for task starting and due today so yeah those are all your basic settings then if you were to go and customize you can see different customizations for yourself so basically in customize you can um, add different fields for yourself and once you add fields you can just bring them turn them on and bring them into certain places now to add a custom field just click on that and as i told you create a field for yourself and then yeah it will automatically add itself to your field place so yeah that is basically how simple and easy it is to do that then you have this setting where you can customize different rules for yourself basically where you can uh you could say uh move to completed section and add just keep on adding more rules if you want to and these rules are obviously for your employees and they could also be taken as a form of automation if you want like uh, let's say you have your um task marked complete send channel message what does this mean this means that if a task has been marked complete by any of your uh, work people a message will be sent into the slack channel if you have or if you've integrated with gmail let's say a task mark complete it will send an email to you task move to a section will send an email to you and stuff like that so yeah these are different automations that you can work with as well and it works great in my opinion it works wonders so you could do that then you also have different apps that you can integrate with your program or your project now to integrate obviously all you're going to need to do is you're going to click on add app once you click on add app you're just going to go on the app you want to integrate it with so let's say i want to integrate it with uh, my slack so all you're going to need to do is you're going to click on slack you're going to click on add to project and it's going to add your slack to your project so yeah that is how simple and easy it is to do your integrations and once you've integrated yourself you can obviously do uh and mess around with tons and tons of features that Asana provides you and uh, yeah you can just make life easier for yourself when it comes to that then obviously there's your form section where you can add forms for your work people just to you know make things easier like them and yourself and forms are basically like even if you want to take your teams or people's opinions forms work great for that so yeah like in my opinion forms also a great thing to do and yeah then finally your task templates where you can quickly create standardized tasks from a template so yeah basically those are all the customizables you can also then uh, if you want to share your board with someone all you're going to do is you're going to go on share once you go on share you can add your member's name or email and just share with them so yeah that is basically the main uh, like overview and tutorial when it comes to asana like if i were to you know talk about it again and give a brief overview Asana is again a similar to other task and project management softwares which allows teams to organize, collaborate, plan and basically execute different tasks. And it acts as a perfect companion to overcome chaos and meet your deadlines. It is a web-based task management and collaboration tool which eliminates the email mess and brings all tasks together. Teams can use Asana to keep track of all tasks, collaborate with other team members and exchange related files and much much more. The tool is widely used by various famous companies like Deloitte, Airbnb, Pinterest and Dropbox. Like how cool is that? These are very famous names in the workspace nowadays. Then Asana is also becoming a favorite among the industry giants due to its numerous project management and collaboration features. It is used by millions of individuals in 195 countries and it is expanding globally. And uh, obviously for project management, individuals and teams can use Asana to break down large work into manageable tasks. It is a comprehensive work management tool that allows you to track project and task progress, share files, comments and notes and keep track of deadlines. It is a modern method of working together in collaboration. Asana, as already mentioned above, is a task management software that has certain features like projects 
workspaces, tasks, and sections to manage projects and tasks related to several clients and teams. Asana is mainly designed for teams to spend less time writing emails and uh, basically working on the assigned tasks that Asana project a management tool helps its users to work faster and take uninteresting goals. You also have workspaces and workspaces are nothing but shared work areas where users can collaborate on tasks and projects. These are basically primary building blocks of your Asana tool. And uh, basically you can create different workspaces for different clients or teams separately. Then after workspaces, as I showed you, you get a space where you can see a series of projects right here. You can get, see all these projects and like they are your organization's main units, which can be both private and public. You can color code them and filter them in your project section based on tags, assigned people and priority. Then you, if like I were to go on tasks again in your project, you have tasks. This level of work organization in Asana is to do's. You may create tasks, fill them with a variety of information and keep your workload balanced. Then obviously you have the whole calendar section where the calendar section in Asana allows you to view all your pending tasks so you can quickly switch between your list view and calendar view on the Asana calendar to see which tasks are due and when. Now, even though Asana includes capabilities that provide everything that you need to stay in sync, some teams are looking for Asana alternatives since Asana project management has also failed to become the ultimate solution due to its high pricing, which we discussed, like it was $25 if I'm not mistaken. Then there comes the more features that I'm gonna overview that I showed, like the communication tools, your inbox over here helps in tracking all your messages and their associated tasks. You can even attach tasks to messages and use project conversations to continue ongoing discussions. You may also prove photographs and PDFs and any comments you can make, uh, which can be turned into tasks so the rest of the team knows what needs to be fixed. And there's also different ways to view your work as I discussed as Asana is mainly designed to adapt to your workforce, it provides various ways to view your tasks and projects. There's your list view, which is a view and group, your tasks in a grid format, basically. There's your my tasks view, where you can see all your tasks in a to-do list format. Your calendar view, it shows a list of your tasks to be completed within a deadline. The board view, it shows you an upcoming task in a bulletin board style format, preferably Kanban. Then you have your inbox where it contains a list of your conversations. And then finally, as I told you, files, which groups together all the files that are uploaded to your main project. Then you also have the management and reporting tools. Like if you are a manager of your team, reporting tools of Asana will make it easier for you to keep your project updates and uh, you can keep it organized and send update reminders when needed. You can also set goals to keep everyone on the same page and milestones to motivate and encourage their hard work. You can also use status updates for projects and portfolios to swiftly communicate with your team and use your dashboard to see the status of all active projects and tasks at a glance and identify issue areas if necessary. You can also be creating teams which will allow you to group people together to work on a single project. The team section comprises an overview tab where you can track projects and a messages tab for announcements and group conversations. You can add teammates as followers to projects that aren't allocated to them to keep them updated and alert them if there are any issues that they can help with. Then the administrators have privacy controls. You can use permissions and other privacy measures to restrict access to specific tasks or even hide some teams that perform sensitive work. Then you have easy app integrations. As I showed you, Asana's app integrations is one of the features that makes it simple to use several other apps to also function well with Asana. The most notable ones being Power BI, Microsoft Team, Zoom, Outlook, Gmail, and Slack for communication, Adobe Creative Cloud, OneDrive, Office 365, Box, Google Drive, and Dropbox for file creation and sharing, and then Harvest, which is an inbuilt time tracker tool as we just saw. 
Then obviously, if uh, I am talking about a main overview, we also have to discuss the pros and cons that come with Asana's project management. So the pros are the design of the interface of Asana is extremely attractive, as you can see. An easy to use calendar synced with all of your tasks, possible to view your personal tasks in one place, and there's different email integrations and automations that make life much easier for you to work with. Then the cons are that there is no simple method to keep track of all time or items across several projects that are due on the same day or week. Since this application is mainly text-based, it's common for the structure to be broken or a job to be removed or the task's name to be changed. It does not allow you to assign multiple people to the same task with so many duties in one location. The process might get slow for you. Now, because Asana lacks time tracking capabilities, you'll need to use an external time tracking program. So yeah, if I were to give a main conclusion to the Asana software, we can see that Asana is a flexible workplace content management system or a CMS that can be tailored to meet the demands of a wide range of businesses. It is a sophisticated project management tool to use this tool seamlessly and master its working. You can enroll in, uh, you know, different project management tool courses that will maybe cover all the things up for you for strategizing and management. So, you know, Asana brings you with project, program, risk, quality, complexity management, customer-centric digital transformation, PMO implementation, and agile and scrum skills. So if you're getting all of this in one little program, I'd say it's a steal and it's like a great thing to add to your repertoire when you're working with a team on a project. So yeah, that's the main overview of Asana and that is how you basically use it to your benefits with your team for your tasks and projects. So if you found this video helpful and informational, please do make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel because it helps me out a lot. And also do share it with people in need of a tutorial like this. And if I left anything out, please let me know down in the comments below and I will get right back to you with the complete fix. And if like made a mistake and you have any queries or issues related to the video, please let me know down in the comments below and I will get back straight away to you. And if you want to see more videos like this in the foreseeable future, please do let me know. I'll make more of these. But yeah, basically that's about it. Uh, I hope you all keep having a great day. That was all from me and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.